Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? My phone alerts at 10 o'clock, so it must be time. Time to stream. How are we doing? Hey, big ups to Tessa. That'll wake everybody up. Tessa finally got her pen. Yay. How's the ink, Tessa? I haven't, uh, I haven't looked at the ink yet. And are you loving it? Oh, you, you said you're loving it, so I'm assuming you are loving it. <clears throat> the boop. Thanks for the sub. Where are my alerts? Very bright pink. Cool. Well, I'll have to check out more pictures of the ink. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning. Audio is low today. I'm actually sitting a little bit further from the mic. I pushed it, then didn't relocate it. So tell me if that's any different or if I need to uh, bump up the volume a little bit more. Good morning, Steph. Let me know if that's any different, Andrew, without doing anything except relocating the microphone. But I had some issues Tuesday with the sound. Bump it. The sound was off kilter on um, Tuesday's stream. It, like, it just all of a sudden stopped working. I wonder if my microphone's dying. These Yetis are prone to death um, after a few years of usage. Rewiz. Hope you're feeling better, Becky. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. Oh, look, the alert box went off on its own. So, yeah, I wonder if my microphone's dying and I just need to go ahead and invest in the, the permanent microphone setup that I need over here. <clears throat> yeah, we had some oddities starting Tuesday. So just keep me in the loop. Did, did that change anything? I bumped it up some. Did that make any difference at all for you? Spend some stimulus money. Yeah, it just came in a couple days ago, finally. Didn't make any difference? Okay. Well, that's just something I need to, uh, I might just might need to, might be time to upgrade the microphone setup. Because I, I like my microphone set up at home. And I'd like to transfer it over here. But it's a few hundred, be a few hundred bucks to get everything set up right, which is fine i'm willing to invest in it um because i'm gonna keep doing this and i eventually my plan was until i could get the internet at home i wasn't going to invest in the internet setup here right that was kind of the plan i mean invest in the audio setup here so when i if i ever get fast internet at home which maybe in a year or so and i can just stream at home more often i will invest in um better audio equipment until then, I'm not really too worried about it. I invested in the stream setup here to make sure the stream is smooth. Um, I did not invest in the in the audio, so we can work on that later. All right, we're gonna do a um, we're gonna do a work project this morning. It's gonna be a very simple, very easy one, one you will enjoy very much. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. We are going to chart out the price increases of Platinum's limited editions this morning. <laughs> so ever since the, the Shiyun announced for $470, I've been trying not to faint. And I am now going to research what this price increase is because I'm, my guess is it's over 100% in two years. And I want to chart that out for next week's podcast. So I haven't gone and looked them up. I think we can be able to find out all the prices. I want to start like the Nice Lilas and the uh, Lavande. That was kind of the first part, the first time they um, they really went into this really um, unique material and limited edition style, right? So I think those are the ones I want to start with, right? They had a, they had the Lake editions before that. Uh, what were those called? Tony Sai. Um, there were a few other ones. I think I sold you the sigh. And I think I want to start after those, right? With the with the purples, pinks. So I broke down Nice Lilas, Lavon, Shungyo, Kumpu, Raka, and the Shiyun. Um, so yeah, let me pull up a screen here and we'll get that going. 
So, cause I want to chart this out. Like I think in two years, I think we're at a hundred percent increase, which is just outrageous. What about the regular niece? Which one's that? Carnelian, Carnelian can count. Yeah, that's in there. So I'm going to do this um, by date. Yeah, I got, got it, Andrew. Got the Levon for 154. Isn't this crazy? Because the, the whole thing is, I don't think we're seeing anything different than what they've done. The ocean ones. Which ones were those? Oh, clear demo with rose gold. Was that a limited one, Tony? Let's see. So what's the best place to sort this out? Let me pull up my screen here. What's going to be the best place to... Who's going to have a good range? Let me change this size a little bit. Who's going to have a good range of products lists that I can... Let's just do this. Let's try with one of the old ones. Let's try the Neasley loss. So, okay, so. Was this the launch price on these? Or do they have a year of release? So I want to know the year of release even supposing that's a good comment, right? Are they drinking their own Kool-Aid, right? They're like, oh, people are going to pay this. Let's just start there. So that was 216. I want to try to find a date. Okay, so that's 2018. So this has a date on it. So let's say 216, and what was the date? April 23rd, 2018. April 2018, Nisley loss. Eighteen, it was $216. Wow. Look how far we've come in two years. <laughs> Would reviews have MSRP and release days? I, I don't put that in, in my reviews, but some of them would. But like on in Google, it's put it's got the date right here in there. Yes, so people can, like Andrew, you can do the Carnelian. Yeah, we can do this together. Um, I'll do the Shungyo next. So <laughs> does it clean my house? Yeah. So if you want to claim, claim one of the limited editions, and I need a date. Oh, yeah, you're on mobile. Yeah, if someone else wants to do this along with me, tell me what you're going to do and um, report back. I want a, I want a month and a year and a, and a, a non-MSRP price. I want, the, I want the street price because now they're, ch they're changing that too. So they can go back and say MSRP. Well, MSRP was this, and that's really not what the – product sold for until now. All right, Tone's doing Kung Pu. Let me do, uh, I'm gonna do Shungyo. So I really just want a month and then I'll go home and I'll, I'll, I'll put this in a little chart that we can share. So the Shungyo is older. So Pinchelle has got a good job of having dates on here. So that's June, 2017, but it doesn't have a price. So Shungyo is June 2017. Yeah, but I think they did uh, the Carnelian. I think it was limited, though. So I want to see if it was limited. I want to count it. And we'll see what, it's, what it is and if it relates to this. So someone else can do the Levand. We need the Levand and the Raka as well. So my review, did I say the price? It's gone.
216 again. So Shungyo was 216. So that looks like the original limited edition price. Yeah, it might be the texture thing. Shungyo. All right, I'm going to do Lavand. Raka. 2019, Raka, July, 2019, and it was 259. Wow. Has there been one since the Raka? Was that the last one? Kumpu, 718. Uh, two sixty. Yeah, I'm shocked the Rocka was two fifty nine. I thought it was a. Th I thought the Rocka was like a three twenty, and the Rocka was the last one. Okay. Yeah, I thought the Rocka was two eighty to three twenty. So good. I'm glad we're looking it up, because Nibs does like the straight, you know, MSRP retail discount. So yeah, that mean, I would trust that price. On theirs, their pricing is very consistent. Um, so was the the Nice Lilas was there two rounds of that? Because I thought it was older than the Shungyo, and much older than the Kumpu. But the date I have has it in 2018. Octavator, thanks for the sub. I appreciate you. That's awesome. But. Kumpu, Kumpu 260, yeah. This is surprising to me. What else do we need to include? Do we need to include the lake editions? Do we need to go back further for the lake editions, or are we good with this? With like these, like the last two, three years of special editions. I don't know that the lake editions are the same group as this. So that's going to be one of my arguments, Jackie. Is, is it fair of what they did to you, right? You've bought, you've bought into what they're making. And then it's almost like they pulled the rug out from under you. That's the way I see it, right? This, that's my argument is you've bought into this group of pens and then they come in with that price i don't i don't get it so the levon was 216 i don't know what year though This Goulet link says 2015. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> How much is the most expensive president? We'll add that in there. So Levand, I'm not confident in this date. Yeah, I'm not confident in all these dates. You think it's 2015 old? I mean, I knew it was one of the first ones, if not the first. Which was first, the purple or the pink? The Lilas or the Bond? But it looks like 216 is the price. Lilas was first, that's what I thought. Maybe, does Platinum have them on their history page? Let me look at that. I 
I just want to chart them by year. <laughs> History pages are inconsistent. Shocking, right? Do we have... Nice LeVond... I'm also spelling it wrong. Yeah, so the Raka is what I compare it the most to, right? I agree with you, Octavator. Like, the Raka is very close to this one, the new one. Yeah, let me know if you have any luck with that, Tony. Did you bring platinum Nike? <laughs> I mean, most of these links are 2018. That's why the 2015 one just seems... out of line. And I can get it cleared up. I'm just going to put, uh, we'll verify this. I'm just going to put 2018 and 216. So basically, the range of all these pins that we just looked up were from 216 to 260, including the Raka. Yeah, it was not 2015. I, I agree with you on that. I can sort that out offline. But I just want to have this nice little bar chart that goes. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Do you like those? That was a good, uh, <clears throat> good sound effects. All right. Do we need to put Carnelian in there? Because Carnelian had no etching. But it was the same price. Oh, it was less. The Carnelian was 192 So even though it was this uh, material, and this was North American exclusive, I think we'll leave that one out of the chart. 2015 was the lakes. Yeah, that sounds more correct. So the niece, the one with the rose trim, are we counting that one? So, wow. The one that gets me is the Raka. Right? So we're basically 216 across the board. Until the Kumpu and the Raka were 260. And then the Shiyun. Am I, am I saying it right? Is it Shiyun? Rose Gold, Nice, 714, 200. <laughs> well, there is, there is some FOMO. But not at this price. So the whole list, it's really two price points. So Nice, Lilas, Lavand, and Shungyo were all $216. 
and those were 2017 and 2018. Kumpu and Raka were 2018 and 2019. Those were both $260. And then the Shiyun is $470. I, I, I'm having a tough time <laughs> with this. <laughs> It's like, I just feel, I feel bad for people like who have bought into this. Like the, it feels like they're being taken advantage of a little bit. And just so we're clear, like this is a platinum thing. I'm not blaming retailers or, or distributors, or anything like that. This is, this is platinum mothership. Okay. Yeah. Entry level Nakaya for 470. Oh, that was supposed to look up the president. Oh, what's the limited edition for the Shiyun? Is it still the 3000 one? Yeah, the Kumpu is definitely the one that I, I agree with that, Sarah. I think a lot of people were uh, kicking themselves on that one. And I think that one's kind of fair. <laughs> Platinum President. That's the demo. Where's the regular one? Stopped at Chartres Blue. You can still get those for a good price. The president's two twenty. I love the thirty seven seventy six, but you can just get a standard one for mid hundreds. Yeah, you can. You there was a time where you could find the standard thirty-seven seventy-sixes for a hundred-ish dollars, give or take a little bit, and you might still can, and that's totally worth it. Yeah, this is the Shium time. I was making a chart, Jim. I wanted to track the pricing and release dates of the last several. Um, so the Nice Lee Loss, La Levand, and the Shungya were all released in 2017, 2018, and they were two hundred and sixteen dollars. The Kumpu and the Raka were released in 2018 and 2019, and they were $260. And now the Shium is $470. So we'll, uh, I will share this out later <laughs> because, yeah. Raka was $325. Are you sure? Send me a link. Because I thought the Raka was more, but I'm not sure. Whoops. Three twenty five. Three twenty five. You're right. You're right. Three twenty five. So that makes a little bit more sense because I thought that one increased over the Kumpu. <laughs> and that's like super close. Thomas, thank you for the follow. That was when we first saw like the main increase. Like the Kumpu jumped. Then the Raka jumped a little bit more. And then the Shiyun went. Yeah, the, the slope. Is, that's why I want to put it in. I'm just going to make a little bar chart, put it on Twitter. Um, with these. Should I include anything else in the, um, in the chart? <clears throat> yeah, they went full hockey stick on this one. Should I put, if I'm going to do a chart, I have Nice, Lilas, Lavon, Shungyu, Kumpu, Raka, Shiyun. Baseline 30 stock 3776 is how much? Not gray market prices. Stock 3776. Kawaguchi, was that lakes? I don't know that those do you think those relate? Stock is 150. <laughs> 
not 176. I've seen a lot of 176s. So if it's 220 minus 20%, what's that, 44? Yeah, that's the 176. So 176. So yeah. Yeah, for Twitter, I'm just going to do a little chart. I'm not going to I mean there's not there's not enough to say to do a blog post. We'll talk about it on the podcast. But I think the stock 3776 is 176. I think that's so 220 minus 20%. And then the rhodium trim ones are like 16 dollars more i'm not gonna put that yeah i think it'd just be a fun little uh fun little chart oh it's so pretty i i adore the pen that's the problem that's the problem is it looks so good like this is what the thing that people ask for right is like hey give me the cool give me a cool purple pen with some cool features but just charge me what you've been charging me yeah yeah no that it would it would fit on the blog i just don't have um the full thing fleshed out if I chose to do it right. If I chose to do it for the blog, yeah, then it would be a bigger conversation than like what we're having today. Today, I just want to put a little chart out <clears throat> that shows just how much of an outlier that is and why. Like, I don't, do we have, do we know why? Has anyone asked why yet? I will ask why when I put the chart out. I will ask the distributor if they know why the price increased. You know what? I will do that while we're talking, just so you know. Uh, I've uh, covered my basis. So let me email uh, Luxury real quick while we're doing this. <clears throat> subject. I should, the subject should be uh, 470 United States dollars. <laughs> <laughs> where is this yo bryce that's i mean that's essentially it's gonna be a one sentence um it's gonna be a one sentence email Patrick, that's a really good question. So hang tight on that. Let me send this email. And the chat, feel free to answer Patrick because I think there's a big uh there's a big thing. I think we got them, Jim. Unless it's before the Nice Lee loss. When they first started doing the pink and purple. Yeah, 220. 216. We found a lot of them for 216. What's up, Evan? What was I looking for? Okay, she knew. Uh, price, platinum sheen price justification. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him if platinum has come out with any reason why such a big price increase. Easy peasy. Scent. That was the scent sound. <clears throat> I love this shirt. It's got flamingos and palm trees and surfboards. Oh, and uh, I guess, is that a tuna? It looks like a, maybe a barracuda. I don't know. Thank you, though. I like this shirt. 
I wear uh, I wear pink shoes with this when I wear this shirt since it got pink and pink t-shirt I wear pink shoes with this one Evan did you miss anything uh were you missing us talking about the Shiyun price increase for the 3776 and how much of an outlier that is let's see the shoes There you go. Those are some Japanese Adidas fashion brad. It's always fashion brad around here. There's some, I forget, these are like Tokyo. What does it say? I don't know. It's some Tokyo series. They're really comfortable. I like them. Is this a trend with platinum? I don't know. Almost the outfit you wore to my island. Yeah, I, I'm wearing a. Uh, I have my island open right now because my turnip prices are 4.43, so I just have it open for the Slack channel. Um, I have a I have a blue and pink hat that would match this perfectly. I just didn't want to wear a hat today. I wore a hat yesterday and it drove me crazy. Do you match your pins to your outfits too? Sometimes, like so. This is the blue pin with the pink, like the strawberry colored ink in it. So that's pretty close. I did I did kind of do that today. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, I like to, you know, even though I'm quarantining, I like to, uh, I like to look good, feel good, look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Right. Chat. <clears throat> yeah. That's a minuscule cost, Evan. Right. I don't disagree with that statement whatsoever, but I think you're hitting it on the head. That's a, that's a tiny, that's a tiny cost. So you got to look at like platinum's. What's the best way to put this? So I think if you do it, you can kind of figure out. All right, see you, Louis. All right, see you, Sarah. Um, you can kind of ballpark what this cost platinum. This price should be like 4X of their cost, right? Because they have to sell it at a hundred percent markup to the distributor, the distributor is going to sell it hundred percent markup to the customer. I mean, to the retailer and the retailer is going to send it at a hundred percent markup in a perfect world. Now these markups might be a lot lighter. So there's a quick way to figure that out. But, um, so basically these probably cost these cost platinum, like very small, like, so like the, the cost of this pen, the weight, the cost of the waste of the pen would be super, super tiny, right? So you can kind of just do a quick, like, okay, what's a quarter of this price? And that's probably about what it costs platinum to make it. So it's something like that. Oh, I haven't watched that one, Robo Jim. I love MKBHD. He's so good, isn't he? He is super good at what he does. I love that guy. Yeah, they're doing it because they can. So that's the thing is like, do we want to, do I want to support this behavior, right? This pen is gonna sell out, there's no doubt in my mind, but you're putting this into like a, a, a category where, like, would you rather have the Lamy 2000 blue or this pen? Because not everyone likes the Lamy 2000. That was a very limited 2000. That was a limited edition. It doesn't come along very often. It's not everyone's thing. It was priced at a number that was really out of scope with their regular stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. This is this is putting it in like I think Andrew said it earlier. Like you can get a Nakaya Piccolo for really close to this price. Like really close, like 550, 500 maybe for gold trim. I think I upgrade mine to rhodium trim. They're like 550. I mean, there's no comparison. Yeah, Aurora Nebulosa. Like it's, it's concerning. <laughs> I, just, I just, like they're getting into a different market there. Yeah. Uh, I 
I don't regret buying that Lamy. I think I would have not enjoyed it as much, paying that much for it. But I might, if they do another one, I might jump on it. We'll see. It's that's the that's gonna be that's the biggest thing issue, Lindsay, because they're gonna go look. We were proven correct in the end, right? That's the thing. Oh, oh, yeah, Patrick, I was supposed to go back to your question. So let's take a quick break and answer Patrick's question. I'm loving the conversation here, but this is this is one of the most common questions we get, and there's really no good answer because they're all good answers. So if I had approximately $200 to spend on a base Japanese fancy pen, would I be better off getting a Platinum 3776, a Sailor 1911 Standard or Pro Gear Slim, or Pilot Custom 74 7, or Custom Heritage 92? So basically, what's the Japanese around $200 pin that you would go for in this list? So it's a really hard question because they're all very good. I eliminate the Pro Gear Slim out of that conversation. Um, I would rather, on the, on the Japanese pins, I would rather save and pay up for the large size ones. So that's... Um, uh, 1911 large and pro gear standard is that the naming like that i have a problem with but those may be out of your budget even though i like the 1911 standards so i do like the 1911 standards that's what my royal changer and is platinum 3776 is the best writer out of all those in my opinion um so i'm probably going 3776 1911 standard and then i'd probably look at maybe the pilot 912 which comes in under 200 dollars, and it's better unless you like unless you really need a colorful pen the custom 74s and 92s are cool and translucent the 912 is just black and rhodium but it's a bigger nib bigger barrel pen it's like the sailor large size pens so that's kind of my that's kind of my quick off the cuff um uh, off the cuff answer. So you're not going to go wrong with any of those choices. You like the 1911s better than the Pro Gear Slims? 100% agree. Yeah, that's a good time to do it. It gives you time to, um, just look around and see. So yeah, I think that's my kind of ranking. I think it's 3776, 1911, and then probably the 912. But then, I mean, I'm using the 92 today. Like, it just depends on what you're looking for. You're not going to dislike any of those pins. There's nothing I would scratch completely off the list except the Pro Gear Slim. And I say, I say that not because it's not a great pin and I don't own five of them. It's that I think it's a little bit behind the 3776 and the 1911 for barrel shape. I prefer the bigger Pro Gear model, the Pro Gear standard model. So, yeah. And then the 912, yeah. The 912 is different than all of those. It's a bigger barrel and a bigger nib. And you can get a ton of nib choices in there. The only kicker with the 912 is it's black and rhodium. That's your choice. You think on the 74? I'm not a huge 74 fan. I don't think it's that much bigger. Do you? Well, then you should really look at the 912. It comes in under $200. It's got a larger nib. And it has a huge selection. My wife's texting me about our dogs, uh, our dogs' BMs. So there you have it. How's your day going? Yeah, like one of my next purchases will probably be a 912 with an FA nib, just because I don't have an FA nib and I've always wanted one. It's such a good nib. 
the 912 is what I have my PO nib in. Stay tuned to my Instagram for some uh, some PO nib love this afternoon. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling some PO nib action. Oh, get a pet unless you fall in love with the color of a Pro Gear Slim. 100% correct. That's what that's my justification for Pro Gear Slims is the colors. I will break out for the colors of the Pro Gear Slims. Totally. But I think the 1911 and um, the standard Pro Gear are better for me writing wise. Get the feed from Flexible Nib Factory. It's made yours heaven. I need to get some stuff from Flexible Nib Nib Factory. And Pro Gear, hey, the Pro Gear Pro Gear Slim is an all timer, right? It's just love. It's a great, but like if I'm gonna choose, if I have my choice between two, I'm gonna pick the 1911 in that size or the bigger Pro Gear. Like especially when they do their standard releases, right? And they do one of each of three sizes. But the specialty edition Pro Gear Slims, every time. Why do you need a three-channel Yovo feed? Uh-oh. I hope no one was on my island. Oh, no, there it is. Someone's coming in. You have an architect that needs more ink. That's fair. Are you been getting any sailor fairy, fairy tale pens? Probably not, because they're all gold trim. That's not my jam. Sarah got one. Uh, she got the dragon. I think they look awesome. I just, I'm trying to think. I don't think I own a single sailor with gold trim. Is the pen addict Slack channel? It's open to anybody. You just have to send me an email to get access. I just don't know I have open access. It's open to anyone. <clears throat> Check my DMs. My DMs where? Son of a biscuit. Oh, this one? Good Lord. That doesn't even look like the right pen, Tony. Hey, Mike, what's up? All right, Tony might have talked me into the uh, 74. I have a 74, and I swear, this 74 is at least a half inch bigger than the Sailor Pro Gear standard. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Especially with the Con 70 converter to give it weight. Like, I use the 91 with the Con 70 and the 74 with the Con 70. It makes them feel good. Okay, you win. I just didn't think it was that large. Can you can you post that in the chat? Or is that, are you like on mobile not being able to do it? Gumbo Man Pat, thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. My alert box wasn't working there. <clears throat> Can't post images in chat? What do I know? A, a link to an image. You gotta have short, you gotta have a link shortener, like Dropler. So yeah, Cocolinas, just send me an email. It's open to anybody. But I just have to send you the invite. I use Dropler, D-R-O-P-L-R. I have used that for years. I pay for that service. It's so good. So, um, Andrew, did you have any luck with your paper escapades yesterday? Is there, Have you test, had a time to test anything out? Yeah. 
So is there a clear is there a clear winner? Sailor fairy tales are really pretty. I might like the 845. I I'm I always look at those when I go to pin shows. And then they they seem like they might be a little bit too big for me. I don't know. It's Canalea size, and that's about the size which I'm at. That's like the max. Overpriced, maybe. There you go. Look at you, Tony. So, holy crap. This did not resize. So, let me pull. I can pull this up from here, Tony. So, uh, not everyone has to do it. So, what I did not realize is how long the 74 is. I thought the 74 would have been more along the side, a little bit shorter than the 3776, to be quite honest. Hey, Divacar. 823 with FA Nib is perfection. I don't know. My 823 with the fine curse of Italic is kind of perfect for me. I don't know if I'll, if 823 would ever come out with a different side, different color, I might get another one. But my only 912 is my fancy, uh, this is my fancy mango pen 912. But yeah, I'm color me surprised on that one, Tony. That was a that's a good picture. I like it. What nib is on that sailor? See, I thought that would have been in between the uh The, the pro gear one in the picture. It could just be the lighting. It looks like very stubby-ish, broad. Zoom, yeah. Okay, yeah, it looked looked interesting. But yeah, color me surprised. Thank you, Tony. Yo, this dude is just looking at pens. That's what we do. I mean, it is called the pen addict, right? It's what we do. We talk about pens. I dislike the zoom li zoom nib too, Schmevelin. I definitely dislike the zoom nib. Uh, a lot of people love it though. Like it is just not for me. It doesn't work good for me. It's too blocky. I would just rather get a stub nib and be done with it. It's too round. It's basically a marker tip fountain pen. If you're not using that, the if you're not manipulating it as you're writing. Right, which I can't do. It's just a, um, it's basically a marker, marker tip. <laughs> Noisy, thanks for the follow. I appreciate you. So yeah, I have a. Uh, it makes my handwriting horrible. Or yeah, it's tough. It's tough because you really have to get vertical. Like the point of it, the point of that nib is to move it more in a vertical way. So it's wide to thin but thin is not that thin it's still blocky but when you're just writing with it it's just like a it's like a round marker it's like writing with a sign pen <clears throat> so the um the one zoom nib i had was in that uh was it stardust the purple one one of the, the purple sparkly sailor one I got the zoom nib in and that's the one I put the fish hook architect on and I ended up selling it to someone. It was much better when I architected that nib because it's so huge. It's kind of the perfect for that, but it was still just too big for me. Too big. The cosmos. Yeah. I do have a cool collection, Noisy. Um, go to penatic.com. It won't show you the collection, but I review pens. Like, that's my job. So, it's pilot number five nib, the same size as the Yovo 6. I think it's smaller, right? I don't know. I guess it's pretty close. So, that's the five. I don't have anything to compare it to here. I guess it's pretty close. Closer than you'd think. <laughs> You think that's like a five nib? I can't get it in there.
So this is the Pilot Custom 92. It's the piston filler. Of their lower end pins, this is the piston filler one. It only comes in clear and blue, I think. Can you even get it in any other, any other colors right now? Can you even get it in blue right now? I think you can only get it in clear. Do you think the Platinum will release the 3776 Rodden Galaxy Starlight with Rhodium Trib? I don't see how. The only pilot piston, yeah. There is an orange one of these. So I have the orange 74. I pounced when I saw that. I've had this pin for years and years and years. I don't even remember where I got it. Cal, it's not too small. It's small, but I don't think it's too small at all. How about that Uniball Micro? I like the Uniball Micro. I like pretty much... I like all Uniball pins except the Vision or the Eye. Pilot 5 versus Yovo 6. There are a ton of communities on Twitch, which is why I love being here. All right, let's bring this up. So, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, wouldn't you say? It's in between the 5 and the 6 Yovo, right? It's bigger than a Yovo 5, but smaller than a Yovo 6. Well, you can see the size of it, Tony. It's bigger than the Yovo 5, I think. Right? Or am I drunk? I definitely think it's bigger than the Yovo 5. Uniball Vision Needle's pretty good. The Vision Needle's okay. The Vision with the conical tip is just an ink flood everywhere. I am going to make you get out of Yovo 5, put them all three in the same picture, now that you know how to upload your pictures to the cloud and share them with us. Yes. Oh, man. How good looking is that? When's the last time you've ever seen one of these for sale? Do you write with old school penmanship? Let me show you. I'll sh I write um, probably not like you think. I write with a, a block printing style. Where's the best thing to show you? So here, you can see my, uh, that's what my handwriting looks like, if you can tell. You missed one from Kingdom Note. Were they reselling it? Were, Kingdom Note does a resell market. Was that their resell? Like how they do the, the used pen sales? All right, we'll wait uh, Tony's next picture. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's my mess. That's my speed handwriting. Like I can make it a lot neater than that. That's like I was writing a script for a video. I'm doing um, I'm doing Apple Bombs three favorite pens video. I've already shipped it to him. It'll be out on the 25th. What's that? Two weeks. So I wrote a script. I write it out if I'm going to do a video so I can just do it in one shot so I don't read it, but I write it out so my thoughts are in my head. And that's just fast writing. So I can write much neater than that if I need to. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Tony, it's putting your location in these links just so you know. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Wow, it's really close to the Yovo 5. It's a little bit bigger, but not as not as in the middle as I thought it would be. It's definitely a little bit bigger. So, there you go, Cal. <clears throat> Nope, I think we're good, Tony. <laughs> that was very helpful like, because I don't have all my stuff with me here. It was super helpful. Mm -hmm. 
I used to use the Uniball Vision Robo Gem, but it was just so, so inky. And then I reviewed one, one of the recent models when they changed them. They might have did, done a retractable one that I reviewed, and it was just like a flood, flood of ink. So, all right, let's see if Bryce replied. Not yet. That pencil shape, I kind of want that, right? It's just, it's different than like those uh, little peeler, like potato peeler things. Use vision on a legal pad. That's not too bad. Yeah, I guess it's because they can, but certainly I'm not the first person to ask, right? Um, oh, yeah, I was going to look up this. <laughs> Brad, have you ever made a pen decision tree? No, but my friend Jacqueline, let me see if I have it here. Uh, let's see if I can do it. So, okay, that's a great question, Cocolina. So here we go. So my friend Jacqueline, so I don't really use uh, shortcuts and you're not gonna be able to see this, but you see that one there called find my perfect pen, okay? So we're gonna click on this shortcut and if Jacqueline, she hadn't updated this in a while, but we can do it. Um, so, okay, let's, let's, okay, Coco, you're gonna answer these questions, are you ready? says what pen feature is most important to you smoothness of writing experience or darkness of ink on paper or reliability and versatility <laughs> yes So do you want to use a smooth pen, a dark ink pen, or a reliable pen that will work anywhere? Smoothness. Let's try smoothness and see what we get here. All right, so we'll do smoothness. Do you want to purchase multiple disposable pens or a single pen body with refills? So you can choose a disposable pen or a reusable pen body with refills. I don't think this is a fountain pen picker. I think this is just a standard pen picker. podcast planner i'd go with the uh golly that's a tough question the piston pillar filler is pretty cool for on the 92 the 3776 nib is better i have both of those that's hard for me to pick single single pin body with refills okay what type of paper do you use fancy paper or whatever paper comes out of the printer Do I want to buy the new Visconti Ecologic? Um, link that in here. I think I've seen it, but I, I don't recall. Throw me a link. <clears throat> Fancy paper or whatever comes out of the printer. Coco seems like a fancy paper person. I might just pick. <clears throat> <laughs> both but we can we can do fancy <laughs> all right we're going to pick fancy oh so okay so yeah this is for standard print so it gave you an answer retro 51 with a schmidt refill so there you go <laughs> it wasn't a fountain pen test oh that's right the 92 did come in that gray that's a good looking pen so yeah we'll have to see i'll have to ask her if she can uh make one for uh, fountain pens. All right, let's do another one. So we're gonna do, what feature is most important to you? I'm gonna do reliability. And let's see, is reliability, versatility more important than have many color options? It says, take me to all the colors. I'm gonna choose that. Is waterproof ink essential? No. 
Do you prefer a capped or retractable pin? Retractable. Zebra Sarasha push clip. Must be the push clip version. I like how specific she is about that because that's a true statement. All right, let's see this. I have not seen this. <clears throat> Waterproof. I knew you were going to say that, Tony. All right, let's see this. All right, see you, V-Rod. Visconti Rembrandt Eco Logic. Miss G's Crafties, thanks for the sub. You're awesome, and you wear awesome shirts. And the cheerleaders are big fans of your sub. So big, they won't go away. You like the matte look? Is it matte or rubberized? Because this picture makes it look rubberized. Bioplastic from hemp. How much are these? Oh, 156? Oh, yeah, you should buy it. That's not a bad price. And you get a hemp box. See you even supposing. Are you done with school yet? Let's watch this video. This is the Visconti Ecologic Fountain Pen. The pen comes in a cardboard box, just a rough looking cardboard with the eco friendly feel. It's a hemp the box, Visconti Ron. That's logo Ron's voice, on by the, the way. Top of the box lid. The fabric bed, which the pen sits, also kind of has this canvas, uh, eco-friendly kind of feel to it as well. Temp, Ron. And included with the pen is a warranty card and, of course, the Visconti Ecologic Fountain Pen. These pens have a matte finish on both the cap and the barrel with an eco-friendly uh, material, which they're made of, with a silver trim on the pen. The clip is the traditional art-shaped Visconti clip. It has the that logo Mike on both sides. The Visconti logo on the top of the cap, just the V, and it is engraved with Ecologic on the barrel of the pen. Super interesting. And it has the Made in Italy on the back. He is quick the with the videos, the pen, though. Just a small Man, he gets these up little fast. Knob of, or silver metal knob. The cap is a compression, or I'm sorry, a magnetic cap that will post as well on the end of the barrel of the pen. It has a matching silver uh, metal section with a matching silver stainless steel nib and black feed. It is a cartridge converter style So you style get the pen, black one, so right, Tony? The front section will in unscrew, and included with the pen is an ink converter for use with bottled inks. It will also accept a standard international ink cartridge if you would like to use cartridges as well. Um, great new pen from Visconti. Get your Visconti Ecologic Fountain Pen at penchalet.com. At thependulum.com. So it seems fairly priced, right? Seems pretty cool. I would try one of those. Like if I if I'm picking out some things to test out or to review, I would I would be into that. It'd be worth trying. You're actually thinking of the red one? Yeah, maybe. It feels like MSD. Boy, we could do that with fountain pen videos, right? <sighs> Yeah, so better than I thought. I hadn't seen that, actually. So, yeah, I think that's better looking than I thought it would be. So that's cool. Might have another Lamy Studio. I do like the Lamy Studio. Lamy Studios, you can get them for, like, half that price. That Blue Lagoon is crazy. Pretty. Those have always tempted me. But for that price, I don't. I want a different nib, even if it's, like, the good gold nibs. It's just still going to be too wide for me. Like, I'd have to get an extra fine and, and put, like, a cursive metallic grind or something on it if I was going to commit to that. And then I don't know if I want that in that big of a pen. It's beautiful, though. All of those are so pretty. I'm still holding off for a Homo sapiens one day. I will, I will, I'll probably get a traditional one with, like, a rhodium trim. I would love if if they do the, um, the, the porthole, the ink window one with a rhodium trim then I might consider getting one. So, yeah, I would have to get a I would have to get a uh, 
really particular nib. Oh, no problem, Jack. What did she have? I haven't even had time to see what her inventory is. It's usually crappy. So, actually, I need to, uh, actually, I need to tweet here. Uh, about to log soon. If anyone. I don't mind the clips. You're with Mike on the Visconti clips. The best, the best part of the Visconti clips is when people sends me send me pictures of the Visconti storefronts with the door handles being the clip. Those are the ones I love to send to Mike. We have definitely gotten some of those. I don't mind the clip at all. I don't, I don't love it. I'm not passionate about the the Visconti clip. Like, oh, we must have the Visconti clip. It's completely fine to me. It does not even phase me whatsoever. Just like he was talking about the Leonardo clip yesterday how he didn't like the clip design i had no recollection i owned three leonardo's i had, i couldn't have told him what that clip looked like until i went and pulled up the picture while we were talking like that's how i mean bad clips do play a role in in purchasing but that's how little i thought about that clip on that leonardo so all right we're gonna wrap it up here soon chat um I had planned on doing uh, some some envelope addressing today. I did order my stamps yesterday. What did we get? We got Sally Ride. Ordered three three books of stamps. Snow rug. Oh, purple shaggy rug. Cool. I don't think I have any of those. Except construction site. I think I have a construction site. Um, what was I saying? Oh, stamps. I got Sally Ride, which I said I was going to get. Earth Day, something else I can't remember now. But uh, clips are a must, and they're super important in your pin choices. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. It's just generally the styles don't bother me too much. There can be some bad ones for sure, but Visconti, I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, so today more roll stops. Yeah, I could get behind that since I bought my first roll stop pin. I can get behind that. So today we're going to do friend of the show with Joseph Sokoli. Is that how you, I don't even know how to pronounce Joseph's last name. He's usually in here. It's Gurface. Um, we're going to talk to him this afternoon. I don't know which show I'm releasing today. I'm so far ahead. I can't think of which ones I'm releasing. So I'm going to release that this afternoon after I get done talking with Joseph. Um, let's see. Then I've got a spoke pen call after that. We might be ready to we're getting close to releasing some stuff. You haven't heard your episode? We got good feedback on your uh, episode, Jim. Very good feedback on your episode. Oh, thank you, Tessa. I appreciate that. Yes, I saw your order. You got the uh, the unicorny. They need to be every two weeks. <laughs> I know. They will eventually be every two weeks, but I have, I have 10 I haven't published yet. That's where I'm at right now. I have 10 episodes I haven't published. So... We're just going to go right now and probably weekly. And they're only like between 20 and 30 minutes. So you just wait till the weekend, listen to two of them, take an hour and listen to two of them. And that way you'll catch up. They'll eventually, we'll eventually have to go to every other week just because I won't have the, the content flood that I have right now. But I'm, I'm glad to have it. Bag update, CPL 24 is bigger than my laptop. <laughs> so I'm looking at 15 inch. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Got lots of things going on today. So um, we'll be back next week. Figure out what we're going to do. Um, figure out what we'll do with uh, the stream. But there's always something, right? All we need is platinum to release prices that are outrageous. So, uh, oh, speaking of weekend, Miss G's Crafties, there's a slight chance I might stream Animal Crossing. will depend on how much the kids drive me crazy or not. Might do an Animal Crossing stream this weekend, depending on how bored we get at home uh, with the kids and if I need a break. So um, we'll see y'all later. Talk to you soon. And look for my wonderful platinum chart later on this afternoon. Bye.